Fellas, I feel like every season we marry ourselves up to a particular build. Last season, we played Revenant every single Grandmaster Nightfall. And just about every time you saw us playing in PvE, we were on Revenant. But this season, this season, I might be a Warlock main. Now, don't be alarmed. It's obviously not permanent. And in my heart, I'm still a Titan. But this build is the best build inside of PvE. It's so good that I honestly think that you won't even need it for the majority of Grandmaster Nightfalls. Like for Glassway this past week, week it's been excellent locking down wyverns locking down overload champions controlling this mid area where it's so easy for you to get collapsed on however it's so good that it really is only utilized in something like glassway dare i say grandmasters or regular grandmasters is just not challenging enough for this stasis bleak watcher build now this is a different version of our build from the other day we did a nightfall guide i was really targeting utility today though is us purely committing to the build and we're going to start with our exotic here eyes of another world eyes of another world comes with the perk cerebral uplink where it highlights priority targets and improves the regeneration speed of your grenade melee and rift abilities honestly the perk kind of sounds boring at least in comparison to the exotic most warlocks like to use which is verity's brown where energy weapon kills increases the damage of your grenades as well as increasing energy regeneration for your grenade abilities however we're not taking advantage of grenades that do damage we're converting our stasis grenade into a stasis turret with bleak watcher which by the way does not do a lot of damage all it does is freezes enemies and the moment it freezes an enemy it jumps to the next enemy and starts freezing a new enemy again add control lockdown that's its entire utility so something like verity's brow with that increase in damage just wasn't working for me in grandmasters on top of that getting kills with energy weapons depending on your energy weapon might be kind of a struggle which is why i found the flat buff of eye of another world to just be so potent when we break down utility times or at least how long it takes to get our grenade back max discipline grants you a grenade every 53 seconds but with eye of another world this drops that down to about 42 seconds so like nearly 11 seconds is trimmed off which greatly adds up when we start combining it with other things when we combine it with charge with light mods and firepower this is a mod that grants us a portion of our grenade energy when we use our grenade by consuming a stack of charge with light that in combination trims our charge rate down to about 35 to 36 seconds and then if you want to go even further with it you want to have stasis turrets up at all times whisper of torment also stacks here where you gain grenade energy each time you take damage from targets fellas i never ran out of grenades i never ran out of turrets and inside of grandmaster nightfalls or master law sectors or pretty much anywhere i had a stasis turret with me at all times times and it was doing wonderful things like locking champions in place locking ads in place and just slowing the targets is enough to just keep them off my back now i want to bring up some of the other combinations here within our fragments and aspects number one ice flare bolts in combination with bleak watcher definitely in the way to go what i told you the other day like disregard that build that build was primarily being utilized as a means of helping my teammates which is why we were rocking things like aeon gauntlets ice flare bolts is so good inside of pve as shadow frozen targets will spawn seekers and that will just continually keep tracking and freezing other nearby targets obviously perfect here for bleak watcher now in combination with the slow abilities that bleak watcher applies to enemies is also the duration in which your stasis turret actually stays spawned and that's where whisper of durance comes in it says slow from your abilities last longer but that last part there allows for the duration to also be increased now that duration there with durance goes from like 26 seconds I think that's around the mark that it's at that it stays by default to like 30 35 seconds so again when you take into account eyes of another world and the buff that it gives you to your regeneration for all your abilities but especially your discipline max discipline whisper of torment and firepower every 30 some seconds you will have a stasis turret if not sooner now the other fragments i was taking advantage of is of course whisper of bonds where defeating frozen targets grants you super energy i know it hurts your discipline as well as your intellect but considering how how much you're freezing targets this is a no-brainer whisper of bonds definitely the way to go again this build right here is way more perfected than what we previously showed you earlier 
later this week. And the final fragment there is one of which has been nerfed substantially in both PvE and PvP, but we're still using it. And that's Whisper of Hedrons. You don't have to use this one, but it dramatically increases weapon stability, weapon aim assist, mobility, resilience, and recovery. Now, all of those things, mobility, resilience, recovery, it's around that plus 30 mark. It does not exceed the cap though. For instance, if you're rocking max recovery, don't put on Hedrons. If you're depending on its recovery, it's not going to benefit you. Where it benefits you is where I'm at right here. Look at this. 50 recovery, 48 resilience. Mobility is kind of whatever in PvE, but you get where I'm coming from. I'm like right there in the middle at tier 5, tier 4. Hedrons really helps me here. Now you can decide whether or not you want to swap out Hedrons for Whisper of Chains, as Whisper of Chains allows you to gain damage resist when you're near frozen targets or stasis crystals. Really good, especially with stasis turrets, but you do have to be within 15 meters of those crystals or that frozen target. I'll probably lean on this a little more in the future. This Nightfall, at least for the first half, is really stretched out, really long range, and I felt like taking advantage of Whisper of Chains was hit or miss. But Hedron's kind of helps you in just giving you that flat buff as you're freezing targets, which I found to be beneficial considering my loadout is low in recovery. Again, if you've got high recovery, if you've got the stats and it's almost to max, don't rock Hedron's. Now, the weapons of choice really has not deviated much from our previous guide. I think any weapon that has Demolitionist is a play for you, and it primarily changes depending on the activity and what champions you're going up against. I do love the combination of Wither Horde and Ikelos, though, because Wither Horde, when you shoot it off, especially when you're combining it with Breach and Clear, your Wither Horde shots are doing a lot of damage. And again, with Wither Horde, if you really want to get the full damage from it, land a direct shot on an enemy and then place another shot at their feet. This would kind of do the same combination as Anarchy. Regardless, though, when you swap over to your Ikelos weapon and Wither Horde gets the kill, it could potentially spawn a Warmind Cell because the game thinks you got the kill with an Ikelos weapon. Therefore, there is a potential for it to spawn a Warmind Cell. I don't want you to overcommit here, though, to Warmind Cells. Again, primarily, everything with our build is just to create as many stasis turrets as possible, which is why weapons that have Demolitionist is super, super good here. I love this rocket launcher here with Overflow and Demo. Fantastic perk combination for Grandmasters. It also does a hell of a lot of damage with Impact Casing. Great rocket launcher here to pair with this build. Now, Firepower. You don't have to overcommit in the way that I did, but I've got stacks on stack. I've got Supercharge. I've got Taking Charge. Everything here is just trying to feed me as many stacks of Charge with Light so that every time I'm casting a Stasis Turret, I am dipping into Firepower. Now, I know that Firepower does stack. You can put on multiple copies of Firepower and get double the benefits. However, I'm not trying to trim off a large amount of time in between stasis turrets i just want to trim off that four to five seconds every single time that in combination with our build and with eye of another world will net me a stasis turret at least every 30 seconds so yeah you can suck this down more and i know combinations like verity's brow getting energy kills doing all those things you can be spitting out stasis turrets like crazy but again for things like grandmaster nightfalls and higher level pve content the cadence is different a lot of the enemies you're going up against are much thicker much stronger and there's definitely more emphasis on higher health targets like champions than there are trash ads. So something like Verity's Brow in combination with multi-stack and firepower is a great combination when you're dealing with a bunch of trash ads in lower end PvE content. I have another world. One stack of firepower is the slow and steady methodical way of getting through this content. And again, this is a build that in my opinion, a lot of other Nightfalls might not even require. I think it's just so strong. It trivializes pretty much all the hardest content because Stacey does that. It freezes enemies. No matter how potent that champion is, if he's charging you and gets frozen, you're good. And again, all of the things that hurt stasis inside of PvP, this was separated. The only thing that was not separated was, of course, Hedrons. And Bungie intentionally went after Hedrons in both PvE and PvP. They didn't want to give us a free buff anymore. Regardless, guys, this is my favorite build this season. I have another world, max discipline, firepower, demolitionist weapons, and wither horde with stasis turrets absolutely wrecks all pve content so much so that at a point yesterday during the nightfall all three of us were playing shade bond which by the way is a really good super but all three of us were literally placing a turret at all three entry points in the boss room i would put one on the left les would put one in the middle and bombad would put one on the 
the right. And that way, anything that tried to come behind us and sneak us would get hit by the turret and either would get slowed or frozen or at least show us damage numbers to let us know how close those enemies actually were. What's a shame is that this is such a great build. I just don't feel like we have an activity to really flex its power. Like this is true power here. Almost makes me wonder if we had like a true horde mode game mode, like endless waves, floor after floor after floor of just ads pouring out at you. That's a kind of game mode that would really put this build to the test. And it may put it to the test so much so that it may be the only viable build, right? But hey, fellas, this is why we play all three characters every single season. We level up our Titan, we level up our Hunter, we level up our Warlock. We don't know which one is going to be the most potent for us, especially in combination with the new artifact mods every single season. I love Crown Splitter. I love Yon Champions to death. But this, this right here, this could turn a lot of us into a Warlock main real quick. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Thank you.